All right, so as you see in this video, I want to do this problem, okay? If you're comparing this with something that you see on one of the assignments, then it would be a problem that not only looks kind of like that, but also has instructions about rounding your answer to so many decimal places. In the example that I'm doing now, I'm going to say, suppose that the question says, round your final answer to four decimal places. But you'll just have to follow the instructions, whatever they are. It's, maybe it will say three decimal places. But I'll explain what we mean by rounding uh, once we get to the final answer. Okay? So here's your question. And I've got it started a little bit. Okay? But I want to remind you that I, if you're going through the videos in the order that they're posted on Blackboard, then this problem comes before the one I'm about to show you. And when I did that one, I said, well, here's an outline of what we're going to do, okay? And the first part in solving something like this one or this one is to use trial and error to find one answer to the equation, all right? And if we're going to use trial and error or guessing and checking, it sure would be nice to have things narrowed down. So there's something called the rational zeros theorem that allows us to narrow down what might be an answer to that equation. Okay? In the last video, I would have explained where the numbers come from, but it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with explaining it again. I have a fraction bar right here, and that means division. The number that's on the bottom right there must divide this leading coefficient right there. Since that's a 1, only 1 divides into 1. Okay? And these numbers on top have to divide that last number, 119. Now, if I got my calculator and I tried to figure out, well, what other number divides 119, you would figure out eventually that 119 is 7 times 17. Okay? So the numbers that divide 119 are 1, 7, 17, and 119. You're always going to have 1 and that number and possibly some in the middle, okay? But these are all the numbers that divide evenly into 119. Okay, so well, what are our possibilities then? Uh, 1 divided by 1, okay, 1 might be an answer. 7 divided by 1, 7 might be an answer. 17 divided by 1, 17 could be an answer. 119 divided by 1, you get the idea. So all of those either plus or minus. So that means also on our list is negative 1, negative 7, negative 17, and negative 119. Okay? And you would just check them, and the way you'd know whether they were an answer or not is if you plug the number into that equation, it would work. It would give you 0. Okay? All right, alternately, maybe the question on your assignment may also say, it may not be set up like that, but maybe it will say find the zeros of that function. Well, that means you take the function and you set it equal to zero like I have it. Okay, now, all right, we got to figure out which one of these works. And I, like I said, I'm just going to plug them in one at a time until I find the one that works. So I plug in 1. If that doesn't work, I'd plug in 7. If that doesn't work, I'd go 17. I would just have to go down the list one way or another. Now, okay, so you know what I mean by that. You know what trial and error is. Uh, the number that I think will work is negative 1, okay? So I'm going to write this out on paper because I think that you should know what it would look like on paper. But I'm also going to show you how you would just type it in your calculator to make it a little faster. So here I'm saying uh, is negative 1 an answer? Okay. This is what it looks like if you plug negative 1 into that equation. And I'm wondering if that is correct once you work it all out. So what's negative 1 to the third power? Negative 1. What's negative 1 squared? That would be 1. What's 1 times 3? That would be 3. What's negative 1 times negative 117? That's 117. And minus 119. Okay? So I'm still wondering, is that right? Does it work? Well, what's uh, negative 1 plus 3? That's 2. 
What's 2 plus 117? That's 119. What's a, all this number right here is 119. What's 119 minus 119? It is equal to 0. It does work, okay? So yes. So we'd go through the list until we got something like that to happen. That's all I'm trying to say. Now, uh, you're probably thinking like, well, I'm gonna, if I have a calculator, I'm going to use it. So if you're going to use your calculator, and if, for example, you want to plug in negative 1 into that equation to see how it works, it's important, I mean, everybody's calculator is a little bit different, but just in general, it's you can't go wrong with putting parentheses in place of the x. So what you have there is, I put negative 1 in, but everywhere there was an x, uh, I put a parentheses, okay? Um, okay, so let's see. So, okay, I'm going to skip through here. There's negative 1 to the third power plus 3 times negative 1 squared. And negative 117 times negative 1. Everywhere there was an x, I put a parentheses. Okay, and then I'll press enter. I'll see what I get. And it says 0, just like I calculated on paper. All right. So if you're going to do it on paper, fine. That's great. You use a calculator. You have to type it in correctly, though. All right. So maybe like get your calculator, make sure you can verify that number going in there does in fact work and that you get zero just to make sure that however you do it, you can use your calculator correctly. All right, so I got that one. Now what's the next step? On my outline, I said, okay, once you find the one number that works by guessing and checking, use that number, use that answer with synthetic division to factor the original equation. So, well, that would look like this. If I found, for example, that negative 1 is in fact an answer to that equation, then I'll set up a synthetic division that looks like this. What goes up here represents what I'm dividing into, which is that original equation. 1x to the third plus 3x squared minus 117x minus 119. So 1x to the third power, 3x squared minus 117, minus 119, whoops. All right, remember each one of these numbers goes with something up there. It was 1x to the third power, 3x squared, 117x, and 119 was just a number. If it helps you to write that to keep track of everything, then you can do that if you want to. How do we use synthetic division once we have it set up? Right now, I have it set up. What do we do next? This number we bring down. We multiply this one by this one. Now we add this one and this one. Notice there are columns here. We work one column at a time. 3 plus negative 1, that's 2. Now we multiply this one times this one. What's negative 1 times 2? Negative 2. Then we add this one plus this one. What's a negative 117 plus negative 2? That would be negative 119. Then we multiply this one times this one. What's negative 1 times negative 119? It's positive 119. And then what's this one plus this one? Negative 119. Plus 119, that's 0, and that's what we would expect. So this gives us a way to factor that original equation. Okay, uh, This is 1x squared plus 2x minus 119. All right, so our third step, given that this factors that original problem, is that it factors as x plus 1 from this and then 1x squared plus 2x minus 119 from this part, okay? This part gives us the fact that negative 1 is an answer. What's the connection between negative 1 being an answer and x plus 1 being one of the factors out of that equation? Well. Say you let x be negative 1. Say you plugged it in right there. What's negative 1 plus 1? It's 0. Okay. All right. 
So that's why the sign here in the factor is opposite what it is in the solution. Now, there's going to be two more answers. Where do we get those? We get the other answers out of this part. Okay? All right. So for that part, we use the quadratic formula. Okay? And that is uh, in another video, so I won't spend too much time talking about it right here. But if you needed help anyway, you could ask me. But here's what the quadratic formula is. Negative b, negative opposite that number, plus or minus b squared. So what's 2 squared? That's 4. Minus 4 times that number times this number. Okay. Over 2 times this number. What's 2 times 1? 2. So there it is. Let's go like one more step. What is, what's all that? 4 minus 4 times 1 times negative 119. Uh, you, that's something that you could just do with your calculator. I want to just be sure to type in, in exactly the way that it is. Okay. So let me show you what I mean by that. So there it is. So 4 minus 4 times 1 times negative 119. Okay, and I'll figure out that that's 480. So root 480. Divide by 2. Now, I could simplify that root, but I notice that the instructions say this. They say, round your final answer to four decimal places. So what we should do is just figure out what decimal this rounds to with a calculator. So here's what I mean. Let's go through and calculate this in the order that it is. So for example, let's do negative 2 plus root 480. So there it is. Okay. I get that number. And then I'll take that and I'll divide it by 2. So I get that number. 9.944. 9 point, sorry, 9544. Now, that's what we're supposed to do with that. The instruction said to round your answer. Okay, well, that's what it means with a calculator. So let's begin writing down our final answer. Okay, final answer. All said and done. Is, well, what was the first answer we found? What was it? Negative 1. It was on that list. We found this by guessing and checking. Okay, so negative 1. And then we did what? negative 2 plus root 480 over 2. What was that? That was this number. And my instructions say round to four decimal places. So there, if I cover that up, there's four decimal places, 9.9544. But that next digit is a 5, so we round that fourth space up. So 9.9545. Okay. Now one more. What's the next one? Negative 2 minus root 480 over 2. So let's do negative 2 minus root 480. Okay, so let's do that part first. Get negative 23 or so, and then I'm going to divide by 2. So take that number and divide it by 2. And I get negative 11.95445. I'll round that also to four decimal places, because that's what the instructions say. On your assignment, you'll have a problem that looks a lot like this one that will say to round the answer to so many decimal places. So that other answer is negative 11.9545. And that's all three answers. We find one answer by trial and error. And we find the other two by the quadratic formula. That's how it's going to look on these. Write your final answer, though, according to whatever the instructions say, though.